Hi folks, Glenn here, back with another video for you. This time I've got two tips for you. One for your camera and one for Photoshop. And when the two are used together, how you can end up with portraits that have got incredible detail and sharpness. Okay, so on screen you can see a portrait of a female model here called Scarlet, and you can see it's quite tightly cropped. Now ideally I'd like it so that the actual picture was extending further off to the left here, so it kind of looked as if she was looking out of the picture itself. Now ordinarily you might think of actually photographing, just grab my camera, you might think of photographing Scarlet like this in landscape orientation, whereby you'll place Scarlet on one side and then leave dead space to the other. But let's think about this now. We pay a lot of money for these cameras and there's a whole lot of technology in there that's gonna give us lots of contrast, detail and sharpness in that sensor. So really, that's where we want all the detail or our person to appear. So just very, very simple. One little thing you can do when you're taking portraits, now obviously this is when you're photographing on a plain background, like the one you can see of Scarlet there, rather than photographing horizontally in landscape mode, turn the camera into portrait, then take the shot. All you need to remember is to allow a little bit of that background to be around them, because then when we're in Photoshop, and here we've got the picture open here with Scarlet, over in the layers panel, if I just click once on the padlock to unlock that layer, then I get my crop tool, we get the crop boundary around here. I just need to drag out, let's say on this left handle here, I can drag outwards. A lot of new people to Photoshop think that crop tool is only for cropping inwards, but we can actually crop outwards. So let's just bring it to around about there for now. Then I'll press enter. We now end up with these very small light gray and white squares. And this is kind of like transparent area here, this empty, there's kind of nothing in here. But now we've got that, if we come over to the layers panel and we add a new blank layer and drag it beneath, all we need to do then is literally just come to the edit menu, choose fill, and then from the contents here, choose black. And that's obviously the color of our black background there. Click OK. And there we go. We've now got Scarlett looking across. It's a lot more interesting picture now. She's looking across the frame rather than being nice and tight. But all the detail where we've spent all our money on our camera is capturing all the contrast, sharpness and detail within Scarlett's hair and her face and what have you. So it's a really, really quick tip, just one to kind of like think about when you're photographing somebody on a plain background, be it white or black. Now sometimes if you may be photographing on a different colored background, all you would need to do is just use the eyedropper there to sample the color of the background, and once you've extended it, you just fill it with that color. So nice and simple, but you're putting your money where it really should be. All right, so that's all, uh, all I've got for you. Just one little thing before I go. We've introduced something new now on the website, thanks to my buddy uh, Dave Clayton. If you do go to my website, over here on the right hand side where it says newsletter, if you just type in your name there, glynn at glyndewis.com, for example, uh, your email address, click on send and you actually subscribe to the newsletter. Now I don't tell you that so I can spam you, but there's gonna be lots of new things coming out with the newsletter. And one thing that we've started introducing is these tip sheets. These have been designed by Dave for me. Now every single newsletter, you'll get a free tip sheet. So for example, in the first one that's recently gone out, I go through every single step that you need to do what I believe is the best retouching te technique out there bar none, frequency separation. So if you subscribe, you'll get these newsletters and these tip sheets every single month. But if you're a new subscriber, you'll also get the link as well. All right, so that's just one extra little thing to, uh, to let you know about so that you can get all those tip sheets. But for this week, that's all I've got for you. I'll see you next time.